This video is about rational zeros of polynomials. For our notes, we'll consider this. The rational zeros theorem says that if the polynomial p of x, defined in the usual general polynomial way, has integer coefficients where a sub n, remember that's the leading coefficient, is not zero, and a sub zero, that's the constant term, right? So these are the end terms we're talking about here. Then every rational zero of p is of the form p over q, where p and q are integers. Now, integers, of course, as you might recall, are positive or negative. That will come into play when we're listing these. And let's consider the following. p is a factor of the constant coefficient a sub zero. So let's color code this. We have some kind of like turquoise color going on here for p. a sub zero, remember that's the constant term at the end of the polynomial. So p is a factor of that term. And then q is a factor of the leading coefficient a sub n. So we're working only with the ends here, which is fine. We'll just ignore everything else when trying to use this theorem to list possible roots. Let's consider an example which says list all possible rational zeros of, and then here's our polynomial, p of x equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 2x plus 3. Now, if you recall what our theorem said, you'll remember there's some distinction between the leading coefficient, which we did in pink, and the constant term, which we did in turquoise. We need, we need the factors of those terms. Well, the factors of 3 would be either 1 or 3. But since, remember, we're using integers here, we're going to say plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. The factors of our leading term would simply be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. Those are the only two factors of 2. In looking at the way the theorem is defined, let's recall that the, the values we have in turquoise here that are the factors of the, the constant term at the end, those are the p's, and then the factors of the leading term are the q's. And the theorem said that all of our possible rational zeros can be listed or described as p over q. So practically, we'll put the list together. That means for p, we have plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. For q, we have plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. Now, the possibilities that we would get putting all of these together are what we want to list out, but we have to pair all possible pairs. In other words, plus or minus 1 could be written as the numerator over plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 2. Now, when you have plus or minus over plus or minus, of course, that creates another plus or minus. I mean, when the signs are different, it's negative. When they're the same, it's positive. We're running all the combinations here. But we can summarize and use plus or minus in our results as well. So we'll just say plus or minus. Now, 1 over 1 would be 1. Plus or minus 1 over 2 would be just plus or minus 1 half. Then we'll consider the next numerator possibility of plus or minus 3, and we'll say plus or minus 3 over 1 would be 3, and then plus or minus 3 over 2 would be 3 over 2, 3 halves. And so all these combinations, and yes, the plus or minuses mean there are actually 2 for each of these. There are 8 possibilities for this list of rational roots. And this is provided directly by this theorem. It doesn't mean that all of these are roots, it means they're possible roots.